I'm here at Mobile World Congress and I'm joined by Manish Shavra from Redisys. Manish, thanks for joining me today. Nice to yeah. be back at a, a trade show at last. Absolutely. Um, so Open RAN is going to be one of the big themes of this event, obviously, and um, that's something that Redisys is very heavily involved in. I mean, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about some of the activities that have involved your company in the last year. Sure. So Open RAN, in fact, has been the basic pillar for uh, Radis's 5G strategy, or even I would say how 4G also started. With respect to Open RAN uh, and the software that we provide to the marketplace, so uh, it's actually based upon Open RAN interfaces and standards, and we believe it's going to change the dynamics of the industry with the flexibility in the architecture that it brings on the table. And also it enables a lot of different uh, uh, ecosystem players out there with respect to different platforms. And from Radis's perspective, uh, we have been focused on both form factors. Let's say from a macro perspective, we have been focused also on the 7.2 split, and that is also one of the contributions into the Open RAN forum from our side. But another interesting part that we have also done is around the small cell forum interfaces that we have worked together between the SCF and the uh, ORAN and we have actually contributed towards the standards, and we have adopted that also in our architecture through Split 6. Okay. In fact, those are also some of the demonstrations that we are presenting uh, um, for both 7.2 Split and Split 6 based on Open RAN. Okay. And um, there's a lot of partner announcements obviously going on at any, at any trade show, and, and probably more at this one, considering we haven't had the physical event for a while, but can you tell me what, what Radis has been doing in that area as well? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So there are two types of announcements. One set of announcements are with our partners, ecosystem partners, platforms, uh, providers like of Qualcomm, Intel, NXP, ARM, and many others that we are working closely with. So you will see Radis's contribution or the announcements with those platform players. At the same time, we are also announcing some key wins for us. And one of the wins uh, is in Japan that we are hoping that probably will come out today. And uh, this is with a company which is focused on Japan local 5G market. It's a company called High Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a win that we're going to announce. Then we're also going to announce a win with a Korean OEM, which is actually focused on building small cells. And those small cells are targeted for deployment across the globe. And we will also be announcing, uh, maybe towards the end of the week, uh, also an announcement with a company called Celona, um, and uh, this company is focused on private 5G towards enterprise. So very innovative company and the kind of solution that they are also coming out with targeting primarily the use cases for private 5G uh, for enterprise. So how to make 5G easier for adoption into the enterprise. So make it more like Wi-Fi, okay. right? So make it that easier. That's uh, so lot, lots going on. And uh, yeah, I mean, you were, you were talking a little bit about some of the work in the, in the standard organizations and, and what you've been contributing to the Small Cell uh, mm -hmm. Forum and the ORAN Alliance. Um, I mean, can you tell us why, why, why is that so important, I guess? Why are these standards bodies so important? Sure. So, as Radis is, uh, because we target or our focus is in terms of creating or uh, implementations around these standards, which have been uh, adopted by all the platform providers, all the RU providers. So from that perspective, we have been focusing also in terms of uh, sharing our experiences in terms of our implementations, right, and the challenges that we see also into the standards. So while 7.2 interface towards the ORU is very popular, <clears throat> one of the key themes for 2022 would also be towards the RIC, the E2 interface. So that's where also we are going to focus. Uh, but at the same time, we also see that a lot of different industries and the verticals, they're also adopting uh, latest technologies like 5G. And uh, if you see, release 16 is also getting adopted. And we announced last year our release 16 based, standard based stack or software. And uh, the evolution of release 16 from standards and right from the implementation and adoption into these verticals will be the focus for 2022. But also towards the end of the year, we are, uh, when the release 17 specs are going to be out. So that will also be interesting for us because we also want to look at how the release 17 uh, will cater towards satellite-based communications networks. And for that purpose, we have also announced in Mobile World Congress our 5G IoT software suite, which is going to cater to all low power devices right from technologies like soft, IoT and CATM, which are based on 4G waveform, but then URLLC, 
um, NTN and uh, NR Lite kind of technologies which are being coming up for 5G waveform. Okay, so there's lots, lots going on, lots to look out for, and uh, yeah, maybe we can catch up again next year and find out how some of this has played out. Absolutely, Great. this is a very exciting segment for us. Okay. Thanks for joining me, Manish. All right, thank you.